History serves, in its best case, as a teacher, a lesson provider. This land and these buildings represent hallowed ground in our county, our commonwealth, and our country's history. And now we have been able to purchase and preserve this property thanks to an incredible $2 million donation from the Nicholas and Athena Karabats Foundation, together with uh, nearly $2 million in funds from the township's open space program. So on December 6th, 1865, the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution officially ending the institution of slavery was ratified. How remarkable that today is December. Laura Boyle Nestor. I am the chair of the White Marsh Board of Supervisors and I am truly honored and thrilled to welcome you to this most remarkable celebration today. The history of Abolition Hall and this property is the story of courage and liberty, a legacy inherited from those who came before us. It is the legacy of people who bravely fled the bondage of slavery and came here in search of freedom. It is the legacy of those who at great risk provided shelter and safety within these very walls. It is the legacy of Frederick Douglass, Lucretia Mott, Harriet Beecher Stowe, William Lloyd Garrison, and other abolitionists who spoke of the horrors of slavery and demanded an end to that inhumane institution. It is the legacy of George Corson who was devoted to the interests of the oppressed everywhere. Today, the history of this place, we add the legacy of Nicholas and Athena Karabats. Thanks to their tremendous generosity, the preservation of this unique property, and the memories of the women, men, families who sought freedom, and those who fought to provide it will continue to be shared. The 1767 homestead is one of the county's earliest farms cultivated from the mid-1700s through very recent times. The homestead sits in the heart of the Plymouth Meeting National Historic District and was, as you know, a very active stop on the Underground Railroad. In 1856, George Corson and his wife Martha Mosby Corson constructed a 200-person meeting space above their carriage shed, now known as Abolition Hall. George and Martha's daughter Helen married an Irishman, Thomas Hovenden, they were both artists and took up residence in what is now known as the Hovenden House at the Corner. In the 1880s and 90s, Thomas used Abolition Hall as an artist studio, painting the fields that still exist outside the hall's windows today. The former meeting hall was converted to a studio space over years as generations of Corson descendants have also become devoted artists. And therefore, through the support of the Carabots Foundation, the Abolition Hall Corson Track property has been purchased and preserved and will be the new home of the White Marsh Arts Center. And direct that a copy of this citation, sponsored by the Honorable Madeline Dean on December 6th, be transmitted to the White Marsh Township and its affiliates. In honor and recognition of the confidence that has been placed in us by the Carabots and the Township, we, the White Marsh Arts Center, pledge an ongoing effort to fulfill the vision of creating a world-class community center dedicated to art and education opportunities for all. To accomplish these goals will take time and resources, but to these goals we all are committed. Just to be here and to know what happened in this room and the good things, and that we can continue to treasure this place because we all drive past it so many times and the actual opportunity to be here and to share this with everyone in White Marsh Township and to have this beautiful new home for White Marsh Art Center it's just, it's, it's so amazing to be um, involved in it in any small way. Abolition Hall, in many respects, was a place of refuge, a place where folks could come to seek refuge, to be safe, to be secure, to gather themselves, and to then further their path, further their journey. There's a saying that says, Black Lives Matter. Well, back in 1856, George Corson and others here at Plymouth Meeting 
realize that Black Lives Matter. They put their lives on the line, they opened up their homes. Because back then, if you were helping slaves or you were a conductor of the Underground Railroad, if you got caught, you could be in prison and fine. But the Corson family and others realized that Black Lives Matter. And number two, it showed that there was a time when they said black people was nothing but property. They were nobody but property, they couldn't think. But for black people to realize that they did not want to be slaves and put their lives on the line and figure out a way to navigate through the forest at night using the stars, using the moss on one side of the tree and using certain code singles and also singing certain uh, songs that allowed conductors to help them navigate to freedom. We have lived in White Marsh Township and have been involved with it since I can remember. Our children all went to school here, all local schools, no private schools. We were strictly White Marsh, the entire area. We love it and so very proud to be here today on behalf of my husband and my family. Thank you very much. And now, here we are, again, being the best of us, coming together to make sure that we preserve this history and extend it going forward. The township supervisors just have done so many amazing things. And going back, not just the current ones, but going back into the history of White Marsh Township. And it's been such an immense pleasure to be your representative and get to share in moments like this. Kids, youth, children from every community across our county and across our region will now have access to this site and the learning opportunities created by this rich history. Which is very important is why we need to remember Abolition Hall and also other areas in this county and the state of Pennsylvania and also across the country of underground railroads because historically, with everything that's on the rise, racism and bigotry, we forget our past, we are doomed to repeat it. Walk about history. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you.